Thanks, Mark. So connected cities, smart cities, sustainable cities, green cities, there's all sorts of new terms for this, but what, what are we talking about and what do you call it? Thank you, Joel. So smart cities uh, is a hype at the moment, of course. You know, I will bring up one picture, I think, to make the point. Um, my father was an, uh, an architect, a physical architect in Rotterdam. Um, so when I have my memories from my youth, I see my father still sitting at a drawing board and sketching physical buildings. Um, I'm a digital architect. And, and what you see nowadays is that a physical infrastructure will get a digital overlay and that, that, that's the picture. And then you start talking about smart cities, um, smart hospitals, smart roads, smart water, smart lighting, smart... I can talk forever on smart, Joel. And, and from an, uh, I would say, governance point of view, uh, we want to work with cities who see uh, that technology as transformational and who really can have an aspirational dream what it can unleash as potential. So what's going on here? We've got obviously the cloud, everything's going up to the cloud just like it already is. What's new and different? And give us a two minute drill on, on what we're looking at. Yeah, so well, what you see here is that everything is connected. Nowadays, and, and, and think about it, that the, the reality is today, only 1% of what can be connected is connected. And we talk about seven billion devices at the moment. And uh, we predict that by 2020, 50 billion devices will be connected. Um, and by the way, that is 30 million a week. And that in these 15 minutes that we're talking, Joel, and then uh, we will bring up another 25,000 connected devices. You know, so what? That's what you could say. Uh, but with all that connectivity, we will produce enormous amounts of data. And the data we have to transform in information, in knowledge, and then in what-if scenarios. And so you have cities nowadays who have these uh, centralized infrastructures where we don't think stovepiped, but horizontally. And you can then talk about um, smart water and smart parking. And believe it or not, at the moment, one of the most, uh, the, the killing application and is uh, parking services. Right. An average citizen in Paris spends four years of his life finding a parking place. You know, for mayors, it's the second source of income added after tax. For consumers, you know, if I go to a restaurant, to a concert, to my work even nowadays, and I have an electric car, I want to reserve a parking place with a plug. Right. The difference is, Joel, and that's only the last five years, because we talked for a long time about smart cities, but we now know how to monetize it. And the monetization are the smartphones, are the tablets, and that enables all kinds of new business models. So why are we talking about this at an, at an environmental conference? That's a good question. Um, think about the sustainability. And that we strongly believe that the future of competition is going to be between cities. That was what it was in the past. Uh, I was in Hamburg two weeks ago. Uh, Hamburg is known as an Hanseatic city uh, in the north of Europe. Uh, they were the port, they were that economic powerhouse. Cities, um, are the only organism in life that will become more efficient as they grow. Everything that gets big goes slower. Cities are a center of innovation. Sustainability um, is economically, uh, that, uh, think about it, uh, with these enormous demographic shifts. Um, how can you make your city interesting? Economically, uh, to attract investors, to create wealth for your citizens. But secondly also, we will get the war for talent. Where do young people want to live? And young people have a choice. So how can you attract talent in your city? And then thirdly, it's uh, ergonomic, uh, you know, the, the environment. And then you see all these examples in the world now. And so cities who really have a sustainability agenda, economically, to attract investors, to create wealth, jobs. Secondly, socially, uh, that people want to live and young people want to live there. And then thirdly, environmentally. And it's, uh, at the moment, uh, every young guy in China who can escape from Shanghai or Beijing, they will do it. So I get how this is improving people's lives in uh, improving environmental uh, out outputs and, and footprints, 
by having less people driving around less, by improving the intelligence of the grid, by making uh, mobility uh, more efficient. But how does it improve people's lives? And I really want to talk about the, the underclass, the, yeah. the low income, because if, it's not, if this is just another thing to make you know, those of us in, in this room, the, 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 the haves, uh, more efficient, more effective, it's, it's nice, but it's not really moving the needle. Yeah. You, we can take away this slide and, and let's talk about it. So first, um, if you really look at what we call then uh, that Internet of Things, um, we think in uh, public sector and specifically in cities, there is a three trillion opportunity, three trillion dollars opportunity in the next decade. To do what? Fifty percent will be um, productivity improvements and then new services, and let's talk about new service, urban services. You know, who in the audience from the US here wants to go to the DMV to renew your driving license? Oh, please, me, it's me. Nobody, <laughs> and that, and, but it's a virtual process, and that you should be able to do that from home. If you think about urban services from a healthcare point of view, 70% of doctor's calls don't need physical interaction. Right. And, it's, um, and so urban services from a healthcare point of view, from an education point of view, and from an, a town hall point of view. And then you get all these additional um, opportunities. Urban services are going to be big as an experience for the citizens. Yeah. Next to that then, uh, you have these economic opportunities uh, for companies. Um, I go to cities that, you know, that, let, let, let me go, let me, I have two boys, two boys, 14 and 17 years old. These boys nowadays have only two statuses in life. You know, they are asleep or they are online. And, and whether you like it or not, that's the new reality. And sometimes to, at the and same so, time. Yeah. So I come in a city, you know, and I come, uh, you know, out of the airport or out of the train or out of my car. And I look around and I still look at all these physical buildings and how the city looks and open places. They come in and say that what is the most used app? What can I learn here? What are we going to do? What can we see? So urban services, uh, that, that, think about it. If you are in your city where you live, in your village, which apps are you using? Yeah. And what you see, for instance, uh, in, in San Francisco, Uber has totally changed the whole way uh, you order a cab, you use a cab, peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah. Uh, in Germany, at the same moment, in Hamburg, we have MyTaxi. And you see these new business models and these new monetization opportunities appearing as we speak. Yeah, but to create the infrastructure around this is something that cities themselves have to do. Who pays for this? Um, you know, we are engaged in around 100 cities, Joel, at the moment. And, you know, we have 43 business models. That's too much. Um, but what you will see... This is Cisco business models or these are... No, the no, no. That it mostly are public-private partnerships, public-private participations. Yeah, but probably five to seven economic models are going to prevail. And that's so service providers are getting a big interest to provide urban services. Um, some cities own the infrastructure. Um, digital rights, it, it, it's still, it's all new. And because we talk about the internet of things, about these 50 billion devices that are going to be connected, but the real money will be in the data. And then the data, information, knowledge, what if, um, and, and the monetization via apps. You know, it's, it's only five years <coughs> that we have smartphones, mm -hmm. that we have tablets. And, and now, who would have predicted a year ago uh, that Facebook would pay 19 billion for an apps firm? Right. But let's get some examples of how, so you just were, uh, signed an MOU with Amsterdam. I know that other, you're working uh, in Paris with lighting, and lighting seems to be, lighting and parking seem to be the gateway drugs to parking, smart Parking, lighting, waste management. Yeah. But who's paying for this in Amsterdam as you, as you develop these uh, new systems with the, with the mayor who we met with uh, a few weeks ago? A few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so actually, it are the consumers who start paying. Yeah, because it is via... But the, in terms the of financing, they're, they're, they're laying out the cash outlay to finance the infrastructure? It is via the apps. And, and what, what you see is that, of course, you need an, an essential infrastructure. Yeah, the Internet of Things, then you need a data policy. Yeah, but then you provide that to the citizens and you get um, all kinds of new business models yeah, that basically provide that money. The initial cost for fiber in the ground... Also, and that you see at the moment cities who own that, who don't even know it that they own it, who owns the digital rights. 
And that's so um, sometimes we fund it with external investors. And they see it also as a big, we have now city funds to help them fund the infrastructure, get the thing going, and then it becomes a, a sustainable business model. So these 43 are gonna eventually, sounds like my, my cellular company with all these different plans, but this is eventually <laughs> gonna winnow down to a few. Uh, I would say probably between five and seven, uh, yeah. Joel. So what's the opportunity for people in this room? I mean, there's, there's a bunch of tech companies, but there's also finance companies. And what are the other kinds of companies that, that we need to bring into the conversation that, that, to help uh, you know, all be moving in the same direction? Yes, yeah, so Joel, no, no, nobody can do this alone. And so I, I really, we, we see it as a new industry. And so we need that thought leadership, and we need global open standards. And the same what happened with cell phone telephony. And 30 years ago, I had my first job in Italy. I'm Dutch, by the way, that's my accent. Uh, you know, it took me three days to get a line to phone home. Now we can seamlessly phone around the world on a cell phone. And so we need global open standards. And so uh, it's an industry initiative, the Internet of Things, the Internet of Everything, and the, the data. We, have, we, we need policies. And are those, policies, need are those standards and policies starting to take shape? Um, it is starting. Yeah. It's definitely starting. Who's driving it? Um, I, I think it's, uh, I always say, you know, as a private sector, uh, you get the policies that you deserve. <laughs> and so I think it, 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 it has to be at the private sector coming up with ideas, uh, working uh, with the public sector uh, to shape them. Yeah. We have time for maybe one quick question about cities and smart cities and sustainable cities. Um, take one right there, quick, can we get a mic? But while you're getting that mic, I'm gonna ask you a question uh, about suburbs. We have, you know, we've been talking about cities, but suburbs aren't going away anytime soon. Is there a, is there a smart suburb uh, plan here, or what do we do about them? You know, if you create these urban services and you get what we call virtual healthcare, virtual education. I lived four years in India, and you know, I lived in Bangalore. I imagine a city where 600 people a day come to the city. And that means that you need a new school every three months. You need a hospital every six months. That's not going to happen yeah. physically. And so we built a village and we created virtual education. Um, and that's second best. And that, but we have been able then with the curriculum in the cloud, the Khan type of models, had to provide virtual education for $3 per student per month. Yeah. A doctor's call, also 70% of doctor's calls don't need physical interaction. Remotely, hey, you can take blood, stool, urine, that's the Internet of Things. Yeah. And so you will come to price points to make it affordable for the slums. Yeah, we hadn't thought about those things, actually, that's part of the Internet, but uh, quick okay. question. <laughs> Do you have a, oh, question answered, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question, Sven? Yeah, I want to, I mean, we, I'm not yeah. sure I fully got that question answered because you yeah. talked about apps, but we're talking about, I'm really talking about the people, not even the base of the pyramid, but even in the inner cities in North America and in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, where you've just got people who, who do not have the things that yet that we have. How does a smart city help them? So you have to look holistically. And it's, as, as uh, politicians, uh, we have to uh, prevent that we also get the digital divides. And so that the digital infrastructure and that we are used to water, gas, electricity, and we position that Internet of Everything as the new digital infrastructure. It can enable healthcare, education, and urban services that also the underprivileged areas can use. Well, this conversation is just getting going, and we're going to continue it tomorrow at breakfast with Cisco, Microsoft, Dell, and SAP, mm. so we can get more into what does it take to create a smart city and, and, and hopefully some smart people yeah. behind all so, that. Joel, I dare to say to all the people in the audience that within the next five years, everybody will use apps in the city where you live, in the village where you live. I think 10 years out, um, had it with the landslide in India last week, the new elections, a new prime minister who's going to build 100 cities. 10 years from now, we will have the first results and see how an integrated city physically and also digitally will look. Yeah, well, we'll look forward to seeing that. We're out of time, but thank you very okay. much. Please join me in thanking William Elfrick. Thank you. Thank you.